Welcome back. Today we're going to talk about the 12500 uh, Defiant uh, Litz model and uh, also do something a little unusual, kind of a unboxing show and tell kind of thing. I have a few things that I picked up today and that came in the mail and uh, they're unusual and that's why I wanted to um, show them and if if you live by a Hobby Lobby you may want to just go pick up some of these things. Let me first show you the Defiant. <coughs> So I had some problems, um, all the fibers broke, most all of them, and it wasn't from uh, super glue. I used some super glue right here, where am I, right here, but I was really careful with it, but what I wasn't careful with is the accelerant. And all the fibers broke as if they had super glue on them, so I don't know if it's accelerant or overspray from light blocking. This is the um, very inexpensive Walmart brand spray paint and I'm pretty sure it's acrylic based, I, I don't really know. And I've used that plenty of times, but I've never seen it like do anything like this. And the accelerant, I don't ever remember having issues with the accelerant. I don't ever remember spraying it onto fibers, and I don't remember avoiding it, and I don't remember any, ever having any problems. Um, although this is the first time I've used this particular brand. And um, I've heard that instead of accelerant, you can use uh, Octane booster or fuel injector cleaner, and that's pretty caustic stuff. So I imagine this is pretty caustic too. If that's the case, that could have been what broke the fibers. So everything was pretty much done. I was all ready to button it up, and all the fibers broke loose. Also, none of the fibers were sticking inside the uh, where is it? Inside the shrink tube. I started out with uh, Elmer's white glue, and that didn't really hold because it shrunk up. And then I switched to Tester's window maker. Oops, Tester's window maker, and that became. Um, like almost like a crystalline like like um, cocoon structure and it was really brittle because it was like so thin it was almost like a like a creme brulee like on the top it was you know it's it hard and like crystalline it was just really weird um, I've never used it for this purpose before so I don't know if it's an appropriate application or not but what I decided to do instead of running so many fibers for the window I'm gonna do what a lot of people do and what I saw HDA model works do with his um, Katinka build in the onion ball, he just put he just stuck fibers inside the ball, and they weren't hooked up to a light source. They were just in there, and they just captured the ambient light. I'm going to do the same thing with this. Uh, it'll make it a lot easier. Um, the reason I did it like this is I really wanted the windows and um, the other lights that were not windows, the the navigation lights. I want everything to really just um, be bright because I thought I thought it would kind of this ship is so small that it wouldn't get noticed in the uh, assault fleet. The other like 10 or 12 ships are going to make up this Borg diorama. But it seemed like that's just too much, so I'm just going to um, go with these um, very small SM LEDs. And these come out of a just a uh, party light kit from Hobby Lobby, but if you go to Model Train Software, you can get um, ones this small and I think two sizes smaller. The problem is they get a little expensive. Um, and it's not the, the issue of the cost. It's that um, you know you, you want it. You know you need like four or five of them, and then you end up burning one out, or you, you whatever it is. You, you end up needing more and more and more. So you seem to never have enough on hand. Um, so I prefer to get them like this. You can also get them. I, I think through HDA Model Works. I think he has a website where he sells um, like a uh, what do you call them? A grams. He sells also for your, for your lit base and all that kind of stuff. And he sells these kind of small LEDs. Um, and even when you go directly to eBay, they're still pretty expensive. So there's really no way around getting the, around the price. But I'm going to redo this one, change the lighting. Um, I'm not that frustrated with the breaking because I really didn't think it would work that well. I mean, I knew I would have some kind of issue with this, so I'm not, I guess, freaking out or overwhelmed because I kind of figured, because by the time I was done with it, um, it went together really well, and I was like, wow, that sure was an easy build. Um, then everything fell apart. So I wasn't too, you know, shooken up. Um, and I already have a new game plan. I already know what I was going to do if it failed anyway, so I'm okay with that. And the other thing, <coughs> a few things came in the mail and I bought today. And I usually don't do unboxings or reviews or anything like that because, you know, the internet's inundated with it and we all do the same stuff. But if there's something unusual, I will do. And the, the first thing is the old uh, uh, Ravel monogram kit, um, Babylon 5 Space Station. Um, I've wanted one for a while, but these go for kind of a silly high price. And it's not that I'm not willing to pay a high price for a model. It's just I'm not willing to pay a high price for a model that's so small and there's not much to it and there's not much detail. I mean, this thing is incredibly small. I mean, there's the main body, and then you get two more. You get the uh, the fusion core. You get the 
back this out. You get the fusion core back there, and then you get a few more bulbs right there. I mean, it's not very small. The whole thing, totally assembled, is is less than this right here. And that seems big, but it's not. It's really small. So I really wasn't planning on... Um, I, I don't want to spend that much money for something that I'm, I'm buying it just to kind of have it. Um, I'm not going to be that satisfied when it's built. And I was watching Starfleet Model Academy, and they built this um, scratch-built uh, data light class using a little more than PVC and a few other items. And it looks really good. It looks as good as the one that Steve Neal made. Um, it looks even better, actually. And um, they used just stuff they had around their house, and they bought a few things. And as they were building, I was thinking, using PVC and materials similar to that, it would be really easy to build a decent-sized Babylon 5 station. So that's kind of what I want to do. Um, not necessarily anytime soon because I got this giant board cube here which is taking up room and the, the uh, if I, when I build a Babylon 5 I want to build it oh I can't the camera's plugged in I want to build it in scale to the uh, the warp models the um, I think they're 4100 or something I can't remember the scale I have, a, I have the shadow the Omega and the Mambari and the Narn up there. I can't see what I'm pointing at. And the Barkiri Bar Cruiser, um, which is a cool ship. And Bad Grendels does a really good build and review on it. He really talks about uh, a lot about pinning and um, pits and a few other things. So that's a really good, um, it's like an eight or nine part review. He does a pretty good one on that if you're interested in watching the uh, Barkiri Cruiser build. But I want to build a Babylon 5 scratch build that goes in the scale of these. And that's just too much room right now. But what I want to talk about besides that is I don't also I also don't buy finished models. Um, kind of defeats the purpose. I don't really have any interest in that. Um, but this is I can't remember the name. The Valkyrie. What, what class of the new Romulan uh, Warbird? I can't remember the name of the class. It probably says it on here. Norex class Warbird. Uh, Valdor. Um, I've only seen two. Uh, Warbirds of this class on eBay, and I think they both have been the large ones. I think one 1,000 scale, I think. This is the one 1,400. And the person who sold it, I mean, it had everything inside here. Let me open it. One handed. It sells the instructions. It has two decal, two decal sheets. The crest, the, uh, the uh, Imperial Romulan Navy Starfleet. Um, I guess these are engine markings and some parts he hasn't put on yet. What I want to do with it is I'm actually just going to stick it on a stand for now, and then when I get the inclination to work on it, I'm going to open it up and I'm going to light it. Um, which kind of means recasting some parts in clear or whatever. And my casting skills are okay, they're good enough. But I like it a little bit more, because I'm never going to rebuy this model. If I screw it up, I'm not buying a new one. Because um, I'm not crazy about the scale. I'd rather have something larger. But I'm not really, uh, I don't like it that much to, to spend the money for it. I'd rather get something a little more unique. Um, actually, the uh, Zindi um, insectoid ship, I've been looking at that. I think I want to get that. Or, what my kids got me for Christmas was another one of uh, the 1350 Enterprise and Axes. What I, what I think I want is actually the refit kit for the 1350. It's less than 200 bucks. So, this is about 200 bucks or so, or I think it's like 250 if you buy, not this scale, but the larger scale. Instead of getting that, I'd rather get the refit or, or something else. Um, but the reason I bought this is um, I had never seen it um, this inexpensive, so that's why I got it. The other thing that came today is two sets of Defiant um, markings for this one that I'm working on here, and then the one that's a battle damage one. I don't know what names. It's obviously not going to be the Defiant. Uh, you get the San Palo, which was the Defiant 2. The, when they rechristened it, when the first Defiant was destroyed, and they got a new one. It was originally the San Palo. So I may use that one, or the Valiant, which, which I think was the first ship in this class. So one, I have no idea. I guess the Valiant would be the, the other one that's kind of blown up and this would be this. Um, it doesn't really matter too much. I'm not, I don't really care too much about the history of the ships or what's canon and non-canon. Um, so I don't really care about that. Just enough so you can actually see the name far away and you can't make it out. It's good enough for me. <laughs> and then I don't usually uh, film like, hey look, I bought this kind of stuff. But the reason I'm doing this is this stuff's on sale right now at Hobby Lobby, and I'm sure it varies by where you're at. I'm in Southern California, but um, the first one is I bought this one because I actually thought it was from GoBots. I don't know why. I didn't realize it was Transformers. I just thought it was GoBots. I've never seen any GoBot stuff. 
you guys probably don't know what GoBots is, but it's the same thing as Transformers. It ran at the same time, except for one was you know by Hasbro and one was by whoever else. Um, but it's still pretty cool. It's only ten bucks. Uh, it's Megatron, obviously, and it's still pretty cool. You know, I wish it was the um, the leader of the bad GoBots, which I can't remember the names. Um, that would have been super cool. And the other cool things, <coughs> this right here. Hang on, let me do this one first. This is the Intercom, the X-Wing, obviously. And I bought this because it matches... Let me get out here. There you go. Because it matches the Millennium Falcon one I have. Um, I like the color. The Millennium Falcon's like totally... Um, it's just a gray scale. There's no color on it at all. And it shows the inside. I think it pretty much mirrors the cutaway... Um, what is it? The, I think I even have it. The cutaway... Um, maybe I don't have one. The cutaway um, NPC kit or monogram, whoever made it. It, it mirrors that, uh, but it you know looks like this, like a like a drawing. This one matched that. That's why I got it. It's only fourteen or, or fourteen bucks. Um, I don't think they have any X or um, Tie Fighters or anything else. I didn't see anything else. Um, and then I've never seen this. They just started carrying Star Trek stuff at the um, Hobby Lobby in my area, and this is pretty cool. Uh, I mean, it shows the tricorder, the communicator, the warp maze cells. <coughs> Uh, the plasma conduits, I mean everything, all the DAX, shows the bridge, it shows, I don't know what that is, it shows stuff, oh there's a, oh, that's weird, it looks like it's engineering, but I'm pretty sure engineering's not there, um, the production bridge, and the Galileo, both 14 bucks, that one, and that one's 10 bucks, the only reason I'm sh telling you this is, go to your hot lobby, see if they have them, they had a bunch, um, it's weird, you think they'd be, I mean, they have them and they put them on clearance, before you even have a chance to sell them, sell them out, and then they're still there. I picked up a few things like that, so check your local Hobby Lobby. You have two in my area, and uh, pick these up. They're pretty cool. All right, see you next time.